Hi, how are you on this amazing day? I'm so excited and thankful you are joining me as we jump into our grade three social studies materials for the week of April 20th. My name is Michael Crispins and I'll be your teacher for the next few minutes. In preparation for our work today, please make sure you have your remote learning packet and you have found the social studies lesson for the week of April 20th. Let's get started. On the top of your lesson, you should see our outcomes for today. Today, we will conduct research about the United States and gather relevant information from multiple sources in order to construct an explanation and description using a claim and evidence from multiple sources. Let's break down our outcome a bit. Today, we are gonna gather relevant information from multiple sources. This really means that we're just gonna be finding specific information to help us construct or write an explanation. Our explanation will have a claim or a clear statement and will we use evidence to support it? Now, when we say a claim, what we're really talking about is a specific statement that can be argued and supported with evidence. We do this all the time and we don't even think about it. But here's an example. Bike riders should be required by law to wear helmets. Or students who read before going to bed sleep better than students who play on a device before bed. These are very specific statements that we can go find evidence to support each statement. A claim is not and should not be a personal opinion. For example, pepperoni pizza is better than cheese pizza. A personal opinion uses words like better or best and they're subject to interpretation and it's really just your own opinion. So let's begin our discussion today with a little short activity. In your packet, you'll find a think about it section right on the front page. Natural resources are something we use that come from nature. Sometimes we use raw natural resources like water, and other times we change the natural resource to make it useful for us. For example, we might cut down trees to make lumber, and then we might use that lumber to make pencils. A pencil comes from a natural resource. Take a look around your room you're sitting in. What natural resources do you see? List them on your paper. Today, we will be exploring how the United States of America uses and benefits from its natural resources. When I think about what benefit might mean, I'm thinking about how we gain an advantage or maybe are helped by having natural resources. In order to do this, we will be gathering information from multiple sources. After collecting information, we will develop our own claim, remember that specific statement I talked about before, to respond to an essential question. Our essential question today is listed below in bold and underlined, and it's how does the United States benefit from its natural resources? We will come back to this question over and over again throughout our lesson. When we conduct research, we are really conducting an investigation. Think of a detective who is trying to solve a crime. They ask different witnesses what may have happened, and they try to capture evidence to help solve that crime. Historical research isn't really that different. Sometimes historians conduct interviews, examine documents, explore maps, and even use math to examine the findings of scientists. Like a detective, we have to be careful about the sources we use. Sometimes a source can mislead you with information that is not important or not related to what you're looking for. And usually one source doesn't tell you the whole story. When researching a topic, we always need to ask ourselves if this source has information that will help answer our essential question. Is it relevant? As we investigate and research looking at different sources, remember to ask yourself how this source could help me write about how the United States benefits from its natural resources. To get started today, we have to set the stage. The United States is the fourth largest nation in the world. 
It has more than 3 million square miles of land and nearly 12,000 miles of coastline along two oceans. Wow, America is a pretty big place. The United States has many different land regions and natural resources. These natural resources are spread throughout the nation, so people from different regions must depend on one another for different goods and services. Let's give an example. Think about us living over here in Maryland. Many Marylanders love seafood, like crabs, oysters, and rockfish. I know I love them. I wonder if you like them too. People who live in the Midwest, let's say over here near Kansas, who would love our seafood would need to have Marylanders send that natural resource to them. Folks that live in Kansas or in the Midwest are known for farming large areas of land. Many of our vegetables and cooking ingredients come from the Midwest. Each region depends on each other to get the resources they want. But how does the United States benefit from all of the natural resources we have? I think we have to dig a little bit deeper. Now we are gonna begin looking at four different sources. As we conduct our research, we need to think about how each of these sources will help us answer our essential question. So as we analyze each source, flip through the documents in your packet and follow along. Source one, a land and resource map of the United States. Our first source is a map. People in the United States use land and resources in different ways. Land and water provide many natural resources that are used to make products around the world. But let's take a closer look at this map. Whenever I see an image, chart, or map, I always know, because my teachers told me, that it's super important that we start by looking at the title. This map has a title, and it's right here at the top, and it says the United States Land Use and Natural Resources. That's what this map's going to tell us it's all about. I notice that on this map, there are lots of these little symbols all over the place. I wonder what each might mean. How could I find out what each symbol means? In the bottom corner, I notice a map key or a map legend. I can see that the map shows how the land is used. And there are different things like manufacturing, farming, grazing, forests, and this little used land. Piece. The, the map is shaded in those different ways. I also see those symbols that I saw on the map. They show where different resources can be found. The resources are oil or natural gas, coal, iron, copper, gold, and silver. Right about above the map key, you can see what's called a compass rose, and the compass rose helps us tell directions. So using it, we can see north, south, east, and west. But let's take a closer look at this map. I see a lot of those oil or natural gas uh, symbols in Texas. I also see a lot of coal symbols up near Maryland. But look out west near California or Nevada, there's all of these gold and silver bars. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. How could this help us answer our question about how the United States benefits from its natural resources? I definitely think we can use this map, but we might need some more information. Take a few minutes to respond to the questions on the bottom of your page about this source. Okay, source two is titled The Table of Natural Resources and Uses. I bet that that might be a good key for what we're gonna see. People in the United States use the nation's natural resources to produce energy, food, and many other products. The United States has rich soil, forests, and many rivers and lakes. These resources support the ways in which people live, work, and interact every day. So when I'm looking at a table, I can look at the table headings, and on the first column, I see natural resources. Below that, I see each natural resource listed, so oil and natural gas, I see coal, iron and metal, copper, silver, and gold, and a bunch of others. In the second column, I see the heading is called products and uses. In this column, we can expect to find all of the things those natural resources are used for. Let's take a look at oil and natural gas. 
For oil and natural gas, we see that it's used for fuel, grease, wax, plastic, fertilizers, medicines, and energy. They sure sound like some helpful things. Read each natural resource and their products and their uses. After that, write your answers to the questions at the bottom of the page. This chart could definitely help us answer our essential question about how the United States benefits from its natural resources. But let's see what else we can find. Source three, graph of United States jobs. Early in the United States history, most people worked on farms. In the 1900s, demand grew for products and more people found jobs in factories. Today, jobs are changing again. Think about how much we use our computers. Data in this chart was given by the United States Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Just like the map we looked at, we should definitely start by looking at this chart's part title. And this chart's title is Jobs in the United States Industries 2018. I see that this chart is showing us jobs in the United States industries. <coughs> An industry is just another name for business. I also see on the chart different businesses listed at the bottom. I see professional, sales work, um, and office work. And then I see a few that I'm thinking about because of our natural resources, farming, fishing, forestry, construction and mining, uh, utilities and gas and electric. You can also see the employed workers are numbers. So over here it lists how many people work in each of these job fields. And that number is listed in millions. Let's look just at the jobs that are associated with natural resources. Farming, fishing, and forestry, let me change my color, farming, fishing, and industry, looks like they have just under four, five million jobs. Construction and mining jobs look like it's just under 10 million jobs. That's a lot of people that are working in construction and mining. And look at utilities and gas, gas and electric. That's also under 5 million jobs. That's pretty interesting. What businesses or industries employed more than 15 million workers in 2018? I can look at the numbers on the side and then just scroll across. Here's 15 million. Oh, looks like professional got that much, had that many. Here's sales and office work. They also had that many. Anyone else? And there's this group other. Maybe these are the jobs that just don't fit into any of those categories. I wonder how these jobs changed over time. Take a few minutes to answer the questions at the bottom of your source document. Source four, a diagram of a hydroelectric plant. People have found many ways to use natural resources for power and energy. Over time, they have used oil, windmills, water wheels, coal, and steam engines to produce power. In the past 100 years, people have found new ways to use gas, solar, and nuclear energy, and water to produce electricity and power machines. When I'm looking at this diagram, the first thing I notice is it has a title. It says, How a Hydroelectric Plant Works. It's right here at the top. If we aren't too sure what a hydroelectric plant is, you're not alone. Let's see if we can break down what it might mean. It looks like this word could be broken into two words. First, hydro. And then the next word, 
electric. The first word, hydro, means water. And then, of course, electric is the second word. So it's how a water electric plant works. That might give us some, some clues here. I bet it's telling us how they use water to produce electricity. On our diagram, I see things listed in steps. They are numbered one through five. Those numbers also show up on the diagram themselves. I can see the one, it looks like it's under some water, two, three, four is this like a circle thing up at the top, and then five looks like some power lines. Each of those numbers also means something. So number one is water stored in a reservoir by the dam. Two means water drops down at a high speed into the dam. Three, the force of the water turns a turbine, and that turbine is like a airplane propeller. And then there's this long thing here, and number four shows us where that circle thing we were talking about, the turbine turns a shaft to generate to a generator, which produces electricity. And then number five, the transmission lines or the power lines carry electricity to homes and businesses. Did you know Maryland has a hydroelectric plant? It's called the Conowingo Dam, and you can find it in Harford County. Take another minute or two and respond to the questions on the bottom of your document sheet. Now that we've conducted our research and we've looked at all the different sources and we've learned about natural resources, it's now time to show what you know. So on your packet, you can find this in the show what you know place, and let's read the directions together. Using the sources, your answers to the questions for each source, and your own knowledge of social studies, write a well-organized response about how the United States benefits from its natural resources. Your response should have a clear claim along with evidence to support it. So in your response, remember to answer the essential question, how does the United States benefit from its natural resources? But first, you need to think about what your claim is. So it says, develop a claim in response to the question. Remember, a claim is a statement that can be supported with evidence. A claim for this activity might be the United States benefits from natural resources. Or maybe your claim is the opposite. The United States does not benefit from its natural resources. The next step is to support your claim with details and examples from the sources. In just a few minutes, you'll wrap up your activity for social studies for this week. Thank you so much for your attention and hard work, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Bye.